In this video, we're going to be showing you how to install the servos, control horns, and push rods in your FT Tutor. Hello friends, today we're going to be showing you how to put the electronics in your FT Tutor. Now the two things that we're going to be using here is our Power Pack B and also this premium hardware kit that comes with your FT Tutor Speed Build Kit. One thing to keep in mind, if you're going to be building the Turbo Tutor or the Amphibious version of the Tutor, you're going to want to use a Power Pack C. Nothing changes from the Power Pack B to the Power Pack C in the types other than the motor you're going to be using because the Turbo Tutor and the Amphibious Tutor want to use a bigger motor. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up our power pack and also our hardware packs, locate our control horns, push rods, and our servos. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab these four servos. We're going to grab our hardware pack and we're going to grab our ESC. The motor and the props we can leave in the box for now. We'll just put this to the side. We're also going to open up our hardware pack here. Get everything out that we have. The first step in putting our electronics in our tutor is going to be to locate our control horns and also we're going to unbox our four servos that we have here. Now if you have our crafty kit, this servo centering tool is going to be incredibly handy and we're going to power it using our ESC that's included in our power pack. So let's go ahead and open up our four servos, our ESC, and I'll show you how to make the connections and center your servos. So before we put any servos in, we're going to go ahead and center our servos. The way we're going to do this is we're going to take our ESC, we're going to plug it into our servo centering tool. This tool is included in our Crafty Kit V2, and the signal wire is going to go into the S right here on the input side from our ESC. We can now go ahead and we can plug in laterally three servos. I'm just going to go ahead and do two at a time. That way I can make the servos oppose properly, and then I'll do the other two for the wing. So now that we have this in here, we're going to go ahead and plug this in. And you can see simply by hitting the different selector button, we have center, and then we have cycle. This gives us manual control, this gives us centering. So we're going to highlight this middle one, these are centered. Now why I have it centered, I'm going to open up my packs of servo arms, I'm going to select the single servo arm that you see here, I'm going to place this right down, right in the center. Then I'm going to take our multi-tool. Once again, our multi-tool here is included with our Crafty Kit V2. We have basically all the tips that used to come in our different screwdrivers that you have to get different power packs for included in this one multi-tool. Absolutely love it. Centering your servos before you put them in is incredibly handy. It's going to make life a lot easier for you when you install things. Make sure that you don't strip out the screws and then grind the gears by having this powered on. There's one. I'm going to hold this right up against here, just like you see here. We're going to pose this one just to the opposite direction. And now our servers are all centered up for our main fuselage. The wing servos I'm going to center up after I put inside the airplane. The reason being is I want to show you how to do something called mechanical differential. Mechanical differential on the wings is going to give us the ability to have the aileron raised slightly higher than the dropping aileron and then vice versa. We want to do this to try to get as much of an axial roll as possible without having something called adverse yaw. So these two guys we're going to go ahead and put to the side along with our servo packs and now we're going to put these inside of our fuselage. Now included with our power pack you're going to see some extensions and a Y harness here. I'm going to grab two of the 30 centimeter extensions that we have and I'm going to fasten my two connectors together making sure that the brown or black wires match up and also the white or the yellow wires on the bottom match up. You don't want to have this plugged in backwards even though you can force it because it's simply not going to work. So we're going to slide this together and I always like to take a little piece of tape and tape my ends together. Same process on the other side. Again, we're going to match up our signal and our ground wires together. And then we're just going to tape this with a little piece of tape. Now we have two servos that oppose each other. The way that we're going to want to mount these is we're going to mount the servo that has the arm facing up and also closest to the hinge line into that appropriate side. So in this case, this one is going to go towards our elevator. We're going to slide this in. And then we're going to face it closest so the servo arm is up and closest to the control surface. Same process on the other side now. And there we go. Now if you're a beginner, make sure that you install your push rod under the servo arm hole that's closest to the screw. 
This is going to give you roughly 12 to 14 degrees deflection and it's going to be a fantastic experience. If you're more advanced, move your push rod further out to allow yourself to have more throw for that control. One thing I would not recommend is if you're a beginner or if you're even an advanced, setting it all the way out because you're going to have to dial down your travels to make sure that you don't have too much deflection and the control surfaces don't rub. Generally, the first or second hole out from the servo arm is exactly where you want to be. So for this one, because it's going to be a trainer, I'm going to route this on the inside here with the servo arm closest hole to the servo screw, roughly about a quarter inch away. There we go. A lot of times people think more deflection means more control. Oftentimes it just means more problems. Now that we have our push rod routed, I'm going to take our premium control horn here. These are our plastic control horns. I'm just going to set it right down into the slot here. When I put the control horn in, I'm going to make sure that the holes of the servo arm are in direct alignment with the hinge line of the control surface. This is going to give you even deflection both ways. Now that we have this, an easy way to make sure everything stays level is take something like your square, hold it firmly against the control surface so that both, in this case, the fin and the rudder are lined up. And then simply go to the outermost hole and use your fingernail to mark the spot just before the hole, right there. I'm just going to transfer this over. Now this is going vertically, so I'm going to go ahead and grip this. Make sure my control horn's still in. I'm going to grip that vertically, bend it 90 degrees. I'm going to grip it roughly three millimeters down, bend it 90 degrees, and snap it. Now I can grip this bend that slowly 90 degrees, and what we're going to end up with is a perfect Z-bend. Next I'm going to remove my control horn, I'm going to route it through the outermost hole, that's going to give us the least amount of deflection, but the most resolution. And now I can place it right back in its slot, press this down, and I'm going to use something like my triangle square to make sure that it's still nice and flat. Now if you need to make any little adjustment, you can actually move your servo back and forth just a little bit to be able to make this perfectly centered. And like I said before, if your servo arm got moved at any time during this, you can always use your servo centering tool to make it re-centered and make sure everything's perfect. The more time you spend on making sure this is perfect, the better your plant's gonna fly and the less work you have to do on your transmitter to trim it all up. All right, this looks wonderful. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock in my servo arm. So all I simply need to do for the bead to go right over that slot that I made, we'll press it down into place, making sure our holes are directly over our hinge line. And then I'm going to go back here, I'm going to lift this up slightly, drop the glue on this side, drop the glue on that side, and then drop it down in place. Once again, I'm going to hold this, I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and neutral. That looks great. Hold this for about 30 or 40 seconds. Once our glue is cured, we can go ahead and put our reinforcement clip on the back of our control horn. We're simply going to pop this into place. And that's going to take any kind of rotational pressure off of the control surface and make it last a long time. Now keep in mind that say sometime you crash this or you want to move on to another project, you can harvest these by simply pulling them off your airplane, soak them in isopropyl alcohol, all the glue will flake right off and you can reuse them. All right, let's do the same process now on the elevator. All right, I'm going to use the extra push rod material. I'm going to make my own Z-Bend. You got plenty of extra push rod here where you can use a new push rod for every single control surface but I like to try to save as much as I can, so that way, if we want to do a scratch build or a future build, we have extra material. I'm going to lift this up gently. I'm going to go to the closest hole, roughly about a quarter inch away from the servo screw. Slide that back in. And we'll take our control horn, we'll put it right into the slot. And we're going to line this right up, right there. Bend that vertically, grab about three millimeters, bend that horizontally, and then we'll cut it about a quarter inch. And rotate slowly 90 degrees, making our Z bend. And now we're going to go ahead and put our push rod to the furthest out hole, then slide it back into the slide. At any point, something doesn't feel right, something doesn't look right feel free to just make another push rod. It's better to make another push rod now than to have your controls not work properly. Once we're happy with that, a little bit of glue. And 
and we'll lift up our servo. Two little drops of glue, one there, one there right under the wings. We'll press it down into place. And then we're gonna make sure that we move it back and forth so everything's nice and centered. This final step is to take our reinforcement plate, just slip it on the back. The control surfaces are now done for our elevator and rudder. If you're building a three channel wing, you're pretty much ready for the power pod and the rest of electronics. At this point, let's put our fuselage aside. We're gonna pull out our wing and we're gonna install our aileron servos. Now, an easy way to keep our wing centered is just take a little tiny piece of tape and put that tape on both sides of the wing surface. This is gonna keep everything nice and neutral so that you can easily work with your hands here. Just like we did on our fuselage, I'm gonna grab two of the 30 centimeter extensions that we have so that our leads can make it all the way out to the center of the wing. As I mentioned before, this process is gonna be the exact same whether you're building the trainer wing for the tutor or whether you're building the turbo tutor wing. Uh, the only difference is gonna be where the servo is located on the wing and the size of your ailerons. Also, if you're an advanced pilot, you may want as much thrust as possible, which means you're gonna be moving the push rod further out on the servo arm uh, to give you more control. Just keep in mind, again, more deflection does not always mean more control. This is something you can always change later. If you put too much control in there, especially if you're a beginner or an intermediate pilot, the plane's simply not gonna fly as good. So let's go ahead and match up our extension wire, signal wire to signal wire. We'll seal that off with a little piece of tape. And then we'll route it through. Go. And we'll pull the lead right on through. Now when we put our servos down, we're going to put our servos down so that the servo arm is closest to the control surface. We'll just put this right down in place, a little press is all you need, and it'll stick right there. Also, take your razor blade and pop out the relief for your servo arm. Next we're going to locate the single sided servo arm, just like what we used on our fuselage. Now typically when, whenever we install a servo arm into a servo, we're gonna mount the servo arm 90 degrees to the servo or as close as possible. Sometimes the odd number of teeth, you may have a little bit one way or the other. For this application specifically, we wanna move it one full tooth inwards. So it looks a lot more like this. The reason we're doing this is so we can get a mechanical deflection where it raises the aileron higher than it lowers it. This will enable the airplane to have little or no adverse yaw. This is very important, especially for beginners, so they don't have to immediately learn how to do control mixing. If you're building a turbo tutor wing, you're gonna to wanna to install your servo arms 90 degrees. I'm gonna hold off putting our servo screw in until we put our servo centering tool to make sure everything's been centered up properly. Next, we're gonna locate our control horn and our extra push rod material. I still have some extra push rod material left over from my previous, so I'm gonna bend my Z-Bend. 90 degrees, rotate 90, grab it about three millimeters down, rotate 90, and then rotate the whole piece 90 degrees. Do this nice and slow so you don't fatigue your push rod. I like to keep my push rods as close as possible to the control surface just so they don't stick out too far. So I'm gonna remove my servo arm here and I'm going to put it on the center hole. So a little over a quarter inch away. So on our control surfaces for our elevator on rudder, we are very close to the servo arm. I'm going one hole further out for this application here. Now, if you're building a turbo tutor, you may want to go all the way out to get as much deflection as possible. Can reinstall it again, making the servo arm point towards the leading edge. And because this is not going to be a three channel, but a four channel, we're going to take the score cut and cut all the way through. Let's go and temporarily install our control horn. And just like before, we're going to line up the push rod right against the top hole of the servo control horn. We're gonna mark the hole with our nail. We're gonna bend it 90 degrees. And we're gonna grip it one more time, 90 degrees up, and then we'll flip off the excess. And then finally, we'll grip it 90 and rotate it down. Now let's put it all together. There we go. Let's go ahead and do the same process now on the other side. When we're done, we're gonna hook this up to the servo centering tool, make sure our deflection is good, and then we'll lock it down. So let's go ahead and match up our extension wire, signal wire to signal wire. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and route our wire. We'll just put this right down in place. A little press is all you need, and it'll stick right there. We're gonna cut the little relief out. And 
And we're also gonna go ahead while we have our knife and we'll cut through our aileron. That's currently just a score cut. For our stock tutor, we're gonna mount our servo arm instead of being 90 degrees to the servo, we're gonna face it forward one notch to give us our proper differential control on our aileron. Now bend the Z-bend into your push rod, just like we showed you before. Just gonna mount this on the middle hole here, about a quarter inch to 3 16 away from the, uh, the servo screw. Temporarily install our control horn, and using our nail, line it up with the hole. We'll bend it 90, and then bend 90 once more. Install the push rod on the furthest out hole from the hinge line on our control horn, and press it back into place. Let's go ahead and bring our servo centering tool back into play here. We're gonna hook up both of our servos, making sure that the ground and the signal wire are on the proper pin. Power it up with our flight battery. And now with our servo centered, we can go ahead and we can glue down our servo arms and our control horns, making sure that everything is properly aligned. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and screw down my servos now. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock down my control horns. Just press that down into place. And then we'll lock down our servo. Again, just a little drop underneath each servo wing is all we need. It's really easy to remove those if we have to in the future. And I just like to kind of hold our servo right in position so the linkage is absolutely perfect. There's one side. Once we've confirmed that our servo arms are centered, let's first install our servo control arm screws. Then we can lock down with glue both our servos and our control horns, making sure that we keep everything nice and neutral as we did for our elevator and our rudder. While that's drying, I'm gonna locate my two retaining clips for my control horns. Now, just because we have these retaining clips for the control horns doesn't mean that you wanna avoid gluing them. If you don't glue these, eventually they could rock loose and give you problems. So always make sure that you glue these down. The retaining clips are really to take off the wear and tear over many, many flights. All right, everything's glued down. Let's go ahead and check our motion. And there we go. Our ailerons are now done. We're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so our servos and push rods are now mounted on our tutor. Our next step is to build our power pod. Check out that video in the description below.